Hello, everyone. This is a very important message. I, I don't know what to say. I, I didn't think I'd be talking to you again. Um, I stopped uploading after um, the so-called pussy gate, and I started preparing, preparing for the worst. Because I saw the powers that be, the internationalists, the globalists. They uh, they had uh, thrown everything against Trump, and I lost faith. I, I, I can't say it any other way. So, um, anyway, Brother John. Right, well, it's with this impending rise of the Antichrist, uh, we did what scripture told us to do, which was to flee into the wilderness. And we were, and there we, you know, got tested by Satan, as is the case, and we prepared, and we prepared for the revolution. Right, and we're prepared. Like, we're a prepared bunch, so it was fine. Like, we were doing okay. However, very quickly into our sojourn into the wilderness, we realized that we were running low on our very, very, very important colloidal silver. So I have a P.O. box set up in town, and uh, we came back into town, and we realized... We realized... That it's been a week. The election's over. Nothing's set up yet. And I'm like, I didn't expect it. The Democrats want to get you lulled into a false, false sense of confidence. Then I started hearing whispers that Trump won. And I couldn't believe it. Here it is a week later. And we have a President Trump incoming. And I just found out. And I'm ecstatic. I am absolutely ecstatic. If I thought it would have been this close, I, I would have voted. And... If Brother John were eligible, he would have too. Oh, yes. I can't wait to rebuild America in the days to come. We're going to make America great again. And, and to start, here is an episode I had hoped to release earlier, but crisis intervened. Right. The, the end times were at hand. Hillary Clinton could very well have been the Antichrist. But it is clear that through the wisdom of the American people, her, her reign has not come to pass. Instead, we have the new Cyrus. Exactly. He is the stranger to God. He was never a too loyal of a Christian, but he is doing God's deeds. That's right. And, yeah, I can't wait to celebrate. But anyway, we're just going to cut off now to episode 9 and... We'll have a full, in-depth episode later about the preparations we made and other matters that pertain to the restoration of American greatness and American Christian values. That's right. This nation was founded on Christian values, not the mystery traditions of Babylon. And now stay tuned for Brother John talking about just those. Welcome to Anti-Reptoid Radio. Uh, episode 9. And I'm Dr. David Ziz. And, and I'm Brother John. And today, we're going to be talking about a very dark and serious topic. And that is the mind control projects that the Illuminati have employed to lower the vibrations. And there are many of these. Numerous. But today we're going to talk specifically about diet and pharmacology. Right. And now, a long, long time ago, a long time ago, the vibrations were not quite as low. How do you think Methuselah lived to be 925, was it? Right. How did Enoch walk with God? These people lived longer. They had plenty of time to learn and to adjust. They had rich families, unlike today. Right. We have impoverished the family. You know, Adam and Eve, they had a huge family. Huge family. And the vibration, despite, you know, the fall and the curse of Adam. Well, that's the thing. The fall did not happen just with Adam and Eve. The fall is very much referring to the vibrations. And they didn't live to see the fall through. We are still falling. Right. The fall is endless until the return of Christ. Exactly. You can end the fall. You just have to embrace Christ. Exactly. Uh, now we have to ask ourselves, how did the vibrations get so low? Well, there's 
There, there are plenty of plenty of ways, sir. There are other religions, um, foreign invasion, immigration, um, se several economic reasons, but largely, largely, it's the uh, the systematic poisoning of a people by his own government. Exactly, and this is what we're going to talk about specifically today, because you see, God endowed us with consciousness. Yes, that's our gift. And our consciousness is the way it is by design. Think of our consciousness as a map of who we are on the inside, who we truly are. And when we take this, when we do drugs, we take this map, this, this depiction of ourselves, and we vandalize it, much like God tells you not to get tattoos. Right. Doing drugs are like tattoos on your soul. On the soul. And now, I'm not saying that if you've been doing these things that you can't be saved because the, the blood of Christ is infinite in its forgiving power. God is infinite. Right. But if you persist... You have to reject these chemicals, these toxins. You have to. And now... What today's episode is dedicated to is these various poisonous substances that were inflicted upon me during my time as a Freemason. Yes, and I think I think before we get started, we should um, define the terms. Because drug, what is a drug? Now, I've had this... I've been in this argument so many times, and, so, and people try to tell me that anything that does anything can be considered a drug. But drugs are clearly marked and delineated by the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, and they, you know, coffee is not a drug. Right. Neither is aspirin. Not, that's medicine. No, no, that's... I'd say if you're, you choose the bark of the tree, that would be medicine. But in its aspirin, in its condensed form, remember, the, this was the poison that allowed the reptiles to take the Jews into uh, Agartha. So, all things are poison. All things are drugs. Except for things that are not. So, food. Food that has a good effect is not a drug, because it's just food. God gave it, gave it to us to eat. But marijuana, that, that's a, that's a drug. It has psychological effects. It tires your soul in ways that an apple does not. Right. Now, I've seen a lot of nonsense floating around on the internet saying things like, drugs are tools. You know what I think about that? Those people are, are tools. tools. Oh, yeah. And you want to know how I know that? I was a Freemason. And if anybody knows anything about tools, it's a Freemason. Yes. Why do you think they've got tools all over their their drawing boards? They are tools of Satan in his new Tower of Babel. Exactly. They're laughing at us, and they're calling all Freemasons tools. That That's what ultimately they are. being a Freemason means. It it's means instrument. building the synagogue of Satan. It's all about the synagogue of Satan. And they call it the Temple of Solomon, but that is clearly just subverted Babylonian mystery cult worship. The mystery tradition that offers no salvation. We've been over this again and again. Mysteries are just traps. Right. There are... God is the ultimate mystery, and he is reserving himself for when we die under the salvation of Christ to experience his ultimate delights. I disagree. God is not a mystery. Um, Jesus is God, and Jesus is the Word, and the Word is the Bible. We can all know God personally if we read the Bible. Right, right. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I spent a lot of time being indoctrinated in these uh, mystery schools, and I make you know a lot of mistakes about this, but with the help of Dr. David Sitz, I can maybe be brought back fully into the light. It's, it's amazing, really. Um, I mean, when I, I was not even that strong of a believer when, I, when you first contacted me and really saved me on that Christian UFOlogy chat room that we met on. 
Right, and those were dark times for me, so I really appreciated making a new friend who could see eye to eye on the things that were in my heart at the time. Yes, I think the thing that really is, Marcus, the way we really stood out and saw each other is, of all the people on that chat room, we were the only ones not seeing the light. Exactly. Now, I want to talk about specifically the various stages of chemical initiation that the Masons put me through. Um, now, I've heard of other projects, things like Project Monarch. MKUltra. MKUltra. These, these are parallel organizations within the government. Now, we have to understand this. The Shadow Government. This is nothing but the Shadow Government. And what what we have in these various projects, Project Monarch is designed to brainwash various individuals to create crisis actors and to create mass murderers. Yes, these, these false flags, the people who commit them, of course they're real. They're real because they've been made to be real. Right, and these are the tools of Project Monarch. And now, Project Monarch is a stage two phase. This comes after the initial MK Ultra phase, which uh, began in the 1960s. Wait, I want to stop you there. We talk about green language a lot, so I think it's worth mentioning that Monarch has it right there in the name. Ark rule are it's like even, the archons exactly but it's also like an arch so it's like the firmament the firmament so it's the rule of the firmament and then by whom mon the moon right and let's look at now mk ultra and we'll see how these are connected the mk this is the m and the k of monarch yes and the ultra simply means beyond. It's outside of. And do you know who was MKUltra at first? I'll give you a hint, it's right there in the name. What is the letter between M and K? L. MLK. Martin Luther King Jr. was MKUltra. Definitely, as was Malcolm X. These are all just, these are all the same, you see. These were part of the false dialectic. The Hegelian dialectic. I mean, these guys were on TV. I mean, come on. If you're on TV, you're part of the web of Satan. They don't just allow anyone to speak openly. Right. You've got to you've got to be part of their club. You've got to play by their rules or be a, a an unwitting tool a pawn. or they'll shut you down, such as a person we'll talk about later today. Right. So now what I wanted to say was the the first step in the initiation process of Freemasonry is getting people interested with cannabis. It's a gateway drug. A gateway to hell. It is literally that. It is a gateway. It is the first lowering stage of vibration. It is associated with the moon. This is why in Islam, hashish is a very, very popular drug. All of the art of Islam is based on the hashish and opium reveries. Yes, this is what they need to commit jihad. This is what they used to do. They would the take, hashashin. They would take young men and they would brainwash them, much like MK Ultra, into their cult by using hash and opium. And they would promise that if they went and martyred themselves, they would experience these delights for eternity. The 72 virgins. 72. An occult number. 72 demons. Exactly. There are 72 demons in the Solomonic tradition, which is practiced by the Freemasons. And that is all you will inherit in the paradise of Allah. Yes, it's a lie. These virgins, yes, the demons have not been penetrated by a man because they will be the one emasculating you for eternity. Azazel will devour your soul. And he's just one. So we've got this, this moon gate, cannabis, 
Now what is the next step as we ascend through the planetary ranks of the Freemasons? Uh, the next step is the planet Mercury, and it is symbolized by psilocybin mushrooms. I do not know what those are. These, these are, okay, first of all, if you eat these, these, these grow in cow dung. You're pretty much eating cow poop, like, oh, that's disgusting. That's gross. That's uh, disgusting. Who would eat anything that grows in shit? I don't know. That's disgusting. Yeah. So, people, uh, people do this. They, they take this. And basically, what they did to me was they, uh, extracted the chemical into a white powder and they gave it to me in a drink at a sacrament during a reptilian honoring ceremony and now I was taken to untold dimensions of insectoid and reptilian and arachnid patterns all I could see was the devouring lines, the endless, endless cubic dimensions of Satan. Ah, uh, the satanic time cube. There was just no redemption in those states. Just absolute abandon and loss and meaninglessness. It was awful. And now these Freemasons who were who were my brothers around me. They relished in this. They loved it. They couldn't even, they had no idea what was wrong. They, they were all just giving in to this horrifying, horrifying substance. How much longer did you remain in the Masons after this ritual? I, I uh, ascended through all of the ranks. And that is where at the highest of the ranks, I was faced. Now, you have to understand that in these uh, brainwashing rituals, what they do is they start compounding the drugs. Ah, uh, mixing the drugs. Right. So, you, you know, if you're taking uh, Is that like a beer before liquor thing, or if you're doing the the Mercury Ascension ritual to uh, prime yourself for reptilian contact. You're not only taking the mushrooms, but you're taking the cannabis as well. And that combination is just too much to handle. Yes, yes, I've seen pictures of this, where, they, where the masons just smoke cannabis and eat mushrooms, and drink red tea, and... And, and worship Moloch! And, yeah, and, and, and burn incense for him ritually. They praise a giant owl god! Who, who receives child sacrifice in the Bible. So tell me the uh, rituals that the Masons, like, how would they set up for these, like, what what would their environment look like? Well, they have these uh, grand lodges, of course. Of course. Uh, uh, these, when you enter them, they have great doors. Uh, you enter at the east, of course, because I'm a... Master Mason. Well, I'm not anymore. I'm saved by the light of Christ. Yes. But, uh, these have checkered floors. These have two great pillars. A black one and a white one. And, I, you know, I don't want to discuss too much of their satanic way of thinking. This yes. idea of two pillars. There is only one pillar. There is one. If you want a good description, read The Fellowship of the Ring. There's a song called The Song of Durin's Awakening in it, and Tolkien was a mason. Definitely he, a mason. He, he, he worshipped Sauron as the Demiurge, and he saw the Demiurge as like a god king. And in The Song of Durin's Awakening, he describes the halls, and it's in many pillared halls of stone. That's where the king sat. And there would be a silver roof, there would be a golden roof and a silver floor, Right, and, and, and who is the their power king? upon the door? And who is their king? In this case, it was Durin, but in, Satan. It's Lucifer. Lucifer, the light bringer. That's that's their king. Uh, that's clear as day. You know, talk to any Mason, 
who's at a high enough level. Obviously, if they're like porch masons, they're like the lower level masons, they're obviously not going to know the truth about who, who the masons really worship, what kind of entities they're in contact with, that sort of thing. Um, I, I have one question, um, and I don't question anything you say, but why, um, if the masons are so into this enthusiastic use of drugs, why do they start Alcoholics Anonymous? Right, see, alcohol was designed by the Masons in, in pre-agricultural times to enslave people into their domineering culture. Now, someone who drinks a lot of alcohol, they're zombies, right? Like, drunks, yeah. And now, if, if you're doing these initiation rituals, you can't be drunk. Uh, they won't work. So the Masons are very, very, very careful to not allow their members to drink alcohol. But they are more than willing to inflict the masses. Alcohol is the opiate of the masses. Right, exactly. And now, you've infected everybody with this alcoholism. I didn't do that. Oh, man, you're talking about the Masons, yes. Right. And you need to pull people out of that and draw them back into the Masonic fold. AA is a primer. It is an initiation group, and there are many of these. Uh, these are these are footholds of Satan. These are groups that you join where, you know, you don't have to believe in Jesus to be in these groups. I hear people all the time complaining, uh, it is all about religion and stuff like that, right? No. It's not. There is no religion in AA. It is pure Satanism. The higher power. All they want you to believe in is a higher power. They don't care if it's Muhammad. The enemy goes unnamed. The 72 demons of Solomon. But only one of them. Right. It's... There is only one pillar. There is only one Lord. There's it's only Jesus one Christ. Lord. There's only one Lord. Now, okay, let's get back to what we were uh, talking about. When, once you start uh, entering the portals of Venus, who is next in line, uh, they begin throwing MDMA into the mix. Now, this is a, a filthy, filthy, unholy drug. When I was a kid, we called it ecstasy, for those listening. Right, um, but the Masons revere this drug as uh, an aspect of ISIS. ISIS! ISIS. Terrorists! And, yes, this is the this is the sex drug, too. Exactly. Um, I remember one time when I was a kid, uh, Deborah and I did a lot of ecstasy, and we went out to the club, and those were awful times. I regret all of it. The Venus ritual is not only when they begin uh, inflicting you with these drugs, but this is when the sexual abuse begins. And I don't feel comfortable talking about this aspect of the, the Masonic initiation rituals. Um, I only have to ask. Which were you? Uh, the following step was the sun. And now, the sun is when they start injecting you intramuscularly with dimethyltryptamine while on top of all these drugs. Yes, and it's worth mentioning, back to the green language, the sun, Suleiman, Solomon. Sol Amun. Yeah. Sol Amun. These are two different traditions. The Roman soul, the sun, and Amun-Re, the Egyptian sun god. That's what this is all about. And now, when they injected me with this... And Amon is the moon. Of course. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a two-part god. It's man and woman. It's, it's, it's androgynous. It carries both the masculine aspect of the sun and the feminine aspect of the moon. Correct. Now, 
When they injected me with these chemicals, I fell out of my body. And now, the, there is only two places that your soul can go after you die. And so, this was clearly not heaven. Yes, there are only two places. Right, and there is no way in hell that those pearly gates were opened to me. These were purely visions of hell. These were uh, contacts with crystalline demonic entities in other dimensions. Uh, they were churning and folding over themselves and uh, chattering very and moving very quickly. And I, I felt myself being drawn toward Saturn. I know what you're talking about. I mean, I haven't done this drug in particular, but when I was young, <clears throat> I one time did eat too many special brownies, and I think I think I almost got there. Right. Th these states can be achieved through many drugs. If you eat enough cannabis, the same thing will happen to you than if you get injected with DMT. And now. I don't want to belabor these these terrifying dreams. I, I can't even, I can't forget these things. They are seared in my memory and um, it causes me great pain. Dreams them. are flights of the soul. Don't listen to any Freudian stuff. Don't listen to any psychiatrists who are trying to mind control you. That's what they are, the mind healers. <clears throat> but dreams are the flights of the soul. And if you're having nightmares, your soul is imperiled. Right. And th these are essentially nightmares. Um, they're nightmares that last for hours and hours and hours. How long did yours last? satanic initiation chambers. Uh, when I was injected with DMT, now this only lasts a very brief moment in reality. Uh, this is only about like five to ten minutes, right? But that is just enough time to take you to the tenth space dimension and be raped by reptilians into eternity for endless eons and now it doesn't matter what is going on on this plane of existence because time operates differently in that realm so now they kept compounding and compounding these drugs until they reached their highest ritual, which is the Rite of Saturn. And this is where I beheld the reptilians.